Hey, today we're looking at Romans chapter 9. Um, the last few chapters of Romans, 5 through 8, are just these awesome chapters about God's love, forgiveness, and life in the Spirit, and resurrection, and nothing can ever separate us from the love of God, right? That's what um, Matt so powerfully did yesterday. Uh, these chapters are great. And then we come to chapters 9, 10, and 11. And 9, 10, and 11 kind of stick out like a sore thumb. It's, all, it's almost like they don't fit in. Um, but I think properly understood, these are an integral part of what Paul is doing in the letter to the Romans. This is um, addressing a and maybe the key issue of the letter. Remember earlier from these videos, um, I talked about how really the main question that Romans seems to be answering is, uh, is God faithful, right? Is he actually faithful? Because God's plan was to, um, to save this world that had fallen into disrepair, right? We learned that in the first four chapters of Romans. It was, it was broken. Um, God's plan is to save the world through his people, through, through Israel, right? Um, you know, through Abraham, you will be a blessing to all the nations, right? Um, this is what God's plan was. And uh, it seems like the world is broken, but in, in chapters five through eight, we discover how God is faithful to the world even while we were sinners, even while we were broken, God's enemies, God's, God still sent Jesus for us. Jesus still died for us. Um, that's how God is faithful to the world. But the question remains, is God faithful to Israel? Is God faithful to his own people? Because the people through whom uh, these promises and this Messiah came, right? Um, they're the ones who are not receiving and who are not believing and who are not um, you know, coming on board with these promises. They're the ones who have seemed to have rejected their own Messiah. So um, is God actually faithful if his own people aren't receiving this? That's kind of the question that Romans 9 through 11 um, is really kind of getting at. And he, he starts by saying, like, he is deeply grieved, grieved to the core that his own people, his own brothers and sisters um, aren't believing. He wishes that he could be cut off if they could be brought in. That's how, that's how hurt he is. Um, but he says, these are Israelites. God is not going to give up on them. They are the, you know, they are the recipients of the promise, the covenant, the worship. Um, it is through their own flesh that the Messiah has come. God is faithful and God will be faithful to them. He says in verse six, it is not as though the word of God has failed because God continually promises that through Israel, the world will be blessed. And, and he's saying that promise is not um, failed. That promise is still very much active. Um, Here's the thing, it looks very different than the way that they might have thought it was going to look. And he tries to get at that by saying that, um, you know, all these different examples where like one son would be the one that is blessed and one is not. Um, God's promise, it sometimes goes to one um, and not the other or goes through one for the sake of the other. And what God is doing here is bigger and is different than what they thought. And kind of what Paul is getting at through some of this is that right now in the history of Israel, um, in relation to Jesus, what they're missing is, um, it, it's actually summed up in, ver in chapter 10 really well, uh, in verse three, for instance, for being ignorant of the righteousness that comes from God and seeking to establish their own, they have not submitted to God's righteousness. Um, Israel at this point was, a, was trying to establish their own righteousness through their own hard work, through their own belief. They were trying to establish their own righteousness. What they were missing is that that way of doing it has been blown up. It's been destroyed by Jesus. And the way to uh, get that righteousness, God's, God's, um, God's faithfulness, God's, God's choice, God's election of you, is not through doing it yourself, but it's simply through believing and trusting in this Jesus. And this comes up in verse 16 in chapter nine. So it depends not on human will or exertion, not on what we want, not on what we think, not on what we will ourselves to do, and not on exertion, not on how hard we work, but on God who shows mercy. Everything, faith, life, salvation, being God's people, election, it falls on the God who shows mercy. Not about what we will, not about how hard we work for it, but on God and God alone. And God is the one who we can actually trust in and throw ourselves at his mercy because he is merciful. Nothing can separate us from his love, right? And this was the fundamental thing that Israel was missing that grieved Paul to his heart and to the, you know, to the core of his being. But God was not done with them. 
chapters 10 and 11 reveal that God will actually continue to work through Israel and God will save Israel um, in a way that's wholly different than what they thought. Uh, but God is up to something bigger um, and actually better through them even still. And we'll hear about that in chapters 10 